God loves me completely and unconditionally. He is love. He first loved me. And so I have the privilege and the opportunity. There is a word from the Lord on today. We, if you allow me to use as a topic, the author and finisher. The author and finisher. Amen. And that title was gleaned right from this text. Amen. And so now more than ever, we have to make sure our focus is keen, calibrated and sharp because there are so many things that come into our lives to try to lead us to focus on the wrong things, try to tempt us to apply to the wrong principles, the wrong teachings and doctrines. And if we don't know that we have to seek Jesus first, we could easily become susceptible to the plot of the enemy. We can easily be deceived by those who are are wolves in sheep's clothing, where they appear that they care about you, but then all of a sudden the agenda rises to the occasion. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, but I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. It becomes difficult at times for us to stand up in the days that we're living in. We have to commit ourselves to being champions for Christ. We have to be willing to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. We have to sometimes be willing to not be popular. Sometimes we have to be willing to be open to people ridiculing us and ostracizing us. But oftentimes we compromise because we want to be popular. We want to be liked. And that type of peer pressure is produced in us compromising, going along with the crowd, just because you don't want to stand out and become a target. But in order for us to remain in the will of God, to live a life that is pleasing to God, We have to be willing to face that type of opposition. If everyone cowers, if everyone compromises, how can there be a standard that's modeled on display? How can someone see the growth in your life? How can someone glean hope from how God has taken you from one phase to another phase of growth? How can they learn if you don't share your testimony of how God had to look past some of your faults and still supplied your needs? How his grace has been sufficient in every area of your life. You might not tell them your business, but you have to be willing to be honest that I have needed him. I do need him. And he's always there for me, even when I'm not at my best. There are people that will oftentimes only be there for you when you're at your best. When you can fend for yourself, when you bring something to the table, when you've been loaded up with benefits, what happens when you don't find yourself in that predicament? When you find yourself in need of someone to help you, in need of someone to be there for you, oftentimes people will turn their backs on you. But Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, he will never turn his back. Is there anybody that can testify that you found yourself in a tight spot? And it appears that it was going to have a certain conclusion, that your circumstance was going to unpack in a certain manner. People began to testify or began to declare that this is how it's going to happen in your life because guess what? That's what happened in my life. But see, the Lord has a way of supernaturally... And that means it's not natural. It goes against the grain. It interrupts the plans of the enemy for God's divine purpose. It defeats the odds. It goes against the stats. It's supernatural because I can't do it myself. But when the Lord shows up, yes, when the Lord shows up in your situation and your circumstance, you can feel his presence because things begin to to work. Things begin to work out for your good. He begins to produce something that just 
maybe a few days ago or weeks ago, someone said could not be produced. Sometimes it's a doctor. Sometimes it's your family. Sometimes it's yourself. But in spite of all of that negativity, God is able to say, I'm still sovereign because I'm still God. Somebody say thank you. So therefore, we are we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So the sin that we allow in our lives, it weighs us down. It's like someone trying to run a marathon, but they won't stop eating what they're not supposed to eat. It's like someone who's trying to run a marathon, but they won't practice. They want to just get out there and run 26 miles. If you don't practice, if you don't apply the principles that will increase your capacity, increase your endurance, and you get out there and try to run 26 miles, you won't even be able to run a mile. But what happens is we want to be liberated. We want to be in alignment with God, but we won't put forth the work. The work means that I have to have a relationship with Christ. I have to be willing to pray without ceasing. Sometimes I have to turn off social media. Sometimes I have to turn off my phone. Sometimes I have to turn off the television. I have to make sure I spend quality time with him because when I am depleted and life will deplete you life will take you take your hope from you life will take your joy from you life will take your passion from you your drive from you and ultimately life will take your faith the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick there are a lot of people who are spiritually sick because they have been depleted and depleted and depleted and they haven't spent the time to be filled back up. You cannot keep going down the road of life and not stop at the spiritual fueling station. Because if you keep running on E, that's when people give up and do things in a rage and also in a place of desperation. Desperate people do desperate things. But when I pray and God reveals to me that he's going to make a way. When I pray and he sends me to a text in the word of God that shows me that he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And so now in the place where I'm dealing with me, don't look at your neighbor. There's some things you have to deal with yourself. How can you deal with you? If you're always trying to deal with somebody else, the first thing that the pilot says or the flight attendant says on a plane is if the oxygen mask come down, first apply yours and then help someone else. Because if you don't apply yours first, you'll drop dead for the lack of oxygen before you can get to someone else. You have to make sure you have Yourself in view, as you do an introspective analysis, you allow God to do a work in you. But it takes work. Yes, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we have to look to Jesus in everything. Acts 17 and 28 declares, for in him we live and move and have our being. Many Christians are ready to look to Jesus when troubles strike. Well, when everything is going well, they lean on their own finite strength, and ultimately, we fail. We must look to Jesus in everything, in good times as well as bad, in joy as well as sorrow, in triumph as well as trial. Our consistent aim and focus must be on Jesus Christ. The scripture admonishes us to look to Jesus that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in the time of need. Grace is unmerited favor. I cannot do anything to make God love me any less. God loves me completely and unconditionally. 
He is love. He first loved me. And so I have the privilege and the opportunity to come boldly to the throne of grace so I can find help in the time of need only because I'm justified through faith in Jesus Christ. I've admitted that I am a sinner. I believe that Christ died for my sins and God raised him from the dead. I have confessed him as my Lord and Savior. So when I find myself in a broken spot, I find myself in a destitute disposition. I find myself when the walls are caving in and I find myself at the end of my finite resources, I can come to Jesus who has all power in his hands. I can come to Jesus who will make a way out of no way. I can come to Jesus who will place before me an open door. But I have to know that I cannot forget that. There's some things I can forget about, but there's some things I cannot afford to forget. I cannot afford to forget where my help comes from. There are people that need help in a lot of different categories. And you know what? If you need a doctor, a physician, you're not going to go to a mechanic for that. If I need a mechanic, I'm not going to go to a medical doctor. I'm going to go to Brother Ernest or somebody like that. If I need somebody to move something for me, I'm going to go to a moving company or someone else that has a truck or something that can help me. I'm not going to go to someone that has a hybrid vehicle that you can't hardly put nothing in. Amen. I'm going to make sure I seek help that will line up with my need. And oftentimes we seek help from the wrong people. Everyone we seek, they all have flaws just like you and just like me. Everyone that we seek help and we beg them to help us, they are limited just like you and me. They can only go so far. But the Lord, he will go all the way for us. His purpose will make sure that our mission will line up with the provision. He has the resources to share them with all of us. I'm glad that when the Lord blesses me or the Lord blesses you, I can apply the blessing because I know that once God blesses you, he can bless me next or vice versa. So when we see God blessing us, we ought to say God is blessing us because God loves all of us and God wants to take care of all of us. So we ought to praise him for his provision. Yes. And also we have to look to Jesus for everything. John 14 and 13 declares, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Some believers do not depend on the Lord to supply all of their needs. They rely on self-effort and other people. They come to disappointment. Have you ever been disappointed before? I mean, it's not that the people don't love you, or maybe they, in some cases they might not love you. But when you encase all of your allegiance in one individual or one entity, what happens when they let you down? Are you going to just give up? Are you going to walk around depressed? Are you going to walk around with your head down? Well, you might for a little while because it hurts. But are you going to allow that reality to perpetually cause you to live in a place, a state of depression, a state of lack of production, a state of stagnation, a state that will not allow you to walk by faith and not by sight? Are you going to allow one individual or one entity to stop you from being all that God has called you to be? If they don't do it, so what? Move on to the next. And when I have a relationship with God, the people I pour into and sacrifice for, they may not reciprocate it. They may not give it back to me. They may not help me. But one thing I do know, when I sow those types of seeds, when I do what I can 
When I'm supposed to do what I can, when I sow those types of seeds, I reap what I sow. So the names might change, the people might change, but the blessing will be the same. You got to understand that God can use anyone and anything to get you what you need. So ultimately, I need to put my trust in God. It might hurt for a little while, but I'm going to know that he may not come when I want him to come. But I have learned. Is there anybody that's learned this? Can anybody celebrate this? He may not come when I want him to come, but I already know he's always going to be right on time. Yeah, weeping man do it for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Praise him for the morning. Amen. It's coming. We should look to Jesus for life, love, food, clothing, and shelter. Again, we think about our jobs, and it's a blessing to have a job. We think about businesses, and we think about all these different things, and we begin to say, you know what, I got a check in my name. I can pay my bills. I, I can put food on the table. I can buy that new dress or that new suit. I can finally get my nails done or go to Sister Maya, get the hair done. I can finally do all these different things. But oftentimes we forget that the day that you got the job, God woke you up that morning. And as a matter of fact, the day they started the company, they incorporated the company through the state of Florida. God had you in mind that someday, even if it was 20, 30, 40 years before that day came, God has the capacity. He has the knowledge and the intimacy to know who's going to come and who's going to need before you even realize you have a need, before you breathe your first breath. And so before you begin to give the company the praise and before you begin to give yourself the praise, realize that God has meticulously, he has comprehensively, exhaustively, systematically, and completely orchestrated your life. And the thing I realized is that, you know what? If it had not been for the Lord, I appreciate the other people who are on my side. I appreciate the help along the way. But if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Give the Lord a where would I be praise right now. You ought to say, Lord, thank you. I realized it was you. I didn't know it when I was young. I was trying to figure out my way. I was trying to figure out what was next. But now as I look back over my life, I know it was you that did it for me. Somebody say thank you. Yeah. So I, I, I take the time to thank God for another day. I take time to thank God for the love I share for my family and the love I share with the church family. I say, Lord, thank you for your love towards me in spite of me. I take time to say, Lord, thank you for putting food on my table. Lord, thank you for allowing me to have clothes to put on. There are people that don't have anything to eat. There are people running around naked, don't have any clothing. But we have the audacity to forget about how good God has been. God is the one that gave us the ability to even go to school and get an education. God did all of that. How can we forget about God? We are promised ample supply for all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we have to look to Jesus with everything. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23 declares, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some believers fail to totally look to Jesus. They reserve a portion of their life for themselves. How many of you know that all of us have a set day, a set hour, a set minute, a set second that we're going to breathe our last breath? We don't know when, and by all means, we don't even know how. 
But we do know it is appointed for a man to die and then what? The judgment. That's an appointment that we cannot reschedule. We cannot call and say, can I come in a week because I'm too busy with the affairs of life. I haven't done what I'm supposed to. Can I wait? No. no. Today your soul is required of thee. What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? There's nothing I can give in exchange for my soul. I don't have enough and you don't have enough because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And he that dwells therein, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Jesus had to pay it all for my soul. I come short of his glory. I need the Lord. That's why I seek him. I can't afford to ha not have a relationship with him. He's divine. I'm the branch. And aside from him, I can do nothing. But with him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Somebody say thank you. If we're to be victorious, we must look to Jesus with everything. Our time, our talent, and our treasure. We must be totally dedicated to him. When you go to a restaurant <laughs> and you have a good meal and waiters or waitresses are really on their game, when you need something else to drink, they are, they're looking at the glasses and they come right on the spot. You don't have to raise your hand. They are on the spot to give you a refill. If something's not right with your meal, they immediately come with a smile and they make it right. And even if you're one of those people that you are very difficult because you have specific requests. You're not like the other people. You come specifically. Those who have been waiters or waitresses, you know who I'm talking about. But they care and they take the time to meet those special requests. What do you do once you are done with the meal? What should you do? Just a, a, just a little bit? A good tip. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, all the things that God does for us. And we, can we admit we have some, some difficult situations? And, and my grandmother, Bernice, used to say, he's not bad, he's just mischievous. Yep. Same thing, right? But we can be very mischievous sometimes. We can be hard-headed sometimes. And my mama would say, a hard head will make us soft. And so, but we still come to God with all of that. We make our request known unto him. And then he intervenes. I'm almost done, but I need to get this out to you. He intervenes. And then, like the, the ten lepers, only one came back, but ten were healed. We act as if God does not deserve a tip. When it comes to sowing, we forget that God is the one that gave you your increase. God is the one that allowed you to buy the things that you buy. God is the one that gave you a check in your name. But yet, when the pastor started talking about tithing, oh no, uh-uh. When the pastor started talking about sowing, oh no. But you won't give God a tip. He don't want all of it. All he wants is a tip. But you got great service. Every time your cup got low, God gave you a refill. Every time your health began to fail, God intervened. Every time a door shut in your face, God opened that door. But yet you have the audacity to say, I'm not going to tip God. You're not giving it to the pastor. You're giving it to God and his church. 
I can't bless you like God can bless you. I can't help you like God can help you. I can't show up like God can show up because I'm limited by time and space. But God is everywhere at the same time. Paul urged us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And so we're going to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We cannot let this, our flesh, the corrupt files in our minds, get in the way of us giving him free reign in the areas of our time, talent, and our treasure. When we go to heaven as Christians to the judgment seat of Christ, he's not going to determine whether or not we're getting in because we're going to get in because we're already saved. He's going to judge our works. And our works don't get us in, but he's going to judge our works through the fire. And we are storing up treasures in heaven every day. I'm so glad that everything I do, God documents it. Man may not applaud it or pat me on my back, but I'm not working for man. Is there anybody that's past that point of being worried about how people think about you, being worried about what people say about you? If you are focusing on Jesus and pleasing him every day and doing exactly what he calls you to do, even when it becomes difficult, even when it becomes heavy, even when it becomes dark, you still put your trust in him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Uh, is there anybody in the church right now? Huh? It might be difficult right now, huh? but you still brought a praise. Huh? It might be hard right now, huh? but you're still going to open your mouth huh? and say, Lord, thank you, huh? because I understand huh? it was you that kept me huh? when I didn't even want to be kept. Huh? It was you that kept me huh? when the weapon was formed huh? and you made sure huh? that the weapon that was formed did not work. Huh? Is there anybody in the church huh? who came to offer the sacrifice of praise uh, continually, which is the fruit of your lips? Uh, give God a praise right now. Huh? I'm done with the message. Huh? This is between you and your God. Huh? The Bible says huh? he inhabits the praises huh, of his people. Huh? If you need God to show up, you ought to open your mouth. Huh? If you need God to help you, huh? you ought to open your mouth. Huh? If you need God to heal huh? what the doctor said could not be healed, huh? you ought to praise his name right now. Huh? If you need the Lord huh? to fix your relationship, huh? you ought to praise God right now. Huh? If you need God to bless your, you financially, huh? He said he would huh, open the windows of heaven huh, and pour you out a blessing huh, that you don't have room enough to receive. Huh. If you really need the Lord, huh, I dare you to open your mouth huh, and give God a praise right now. Huh. Praise him like you love him. Huh. Praise him like you need him. Huh. Praise him through the different... The Empowered Life is sponsored by Marcus D. Floyd Ministries and is possible due to the grace of God and the generosity and prayers of our partners. If you have been blessed by today's program, please visit us at MarcusFloydMinistries.com to partner with this ministry as we influence the world for Christ. All gifts are tax-deductible to the full extent allowed by law.